Well, turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to Luke chapter 21, verse 25. I'm going to just kind of hook up where we left off last week. And uh, it says, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. I believe we're about to see that as never before. There'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, the eclipse was a sign. No, it wasn't a sign. Why? Well, because everybody knew it and it was explained. Listen, I know I've said this before, but when God moves the moon in front of the sun, nobody's going to expect it. When the stars look up and you're looking for the north stars and it's in the south, nobody's going to expect it. As long as you can expect it, then you're not going to be able to, 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 to have any understanding of it. it's God. But listen, when God does it, everybody knows. Everybody knows. Amen? And notice here, on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. You know what perplexity means? I can't figure it out. I don't know what to do. It's also interesting that this word nations here in the Greek is the word ethnos. It's where we get our word ethnicity or ethnic. Have you noticed how much of the conflict today is ethnic, ethnic driven? All over the world it's that way. It's going to get worse. Not better. Now, Hey, don't, don't feel sad. I'm going to help you today. Amen. But you can't change the Bible. Amen. Listen to what it says in verse 25. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for the expectation of the things that are coming. Not even the things themselves, just the expectation of it. Oh, my God, this is going to happen. Oh, this is going to happen. Men's hearts failing them. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's heart attack. You know, they're going, people are going to have heart attacks all over the world. I don't believe that's what that means at all. I believe it means your faith is going to fail. Now, hopefully not yours. But the Bible says with the heart, man believes. But what's going to, what's going to cause that? Why is it that, that that's going to cause people's faith to, feel, to fall? Why is it such a big deal? Because it says something that you need to hear here. It says, men's hearts failing them for fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. They're going to see it, and they're going to be moved by it. They're going to expect it, and they're going to be moved by it. Listen to me, if you're a child of God, that's not you. I said, that's not you. If you're a person of faith, you can't let that kind of stuff bother you. And I don't mean this wrong, but look, all this is going to happen in the crucible of, of governments and leaders. Well, I didn't vote for that leader. He's the one causing all the problems. I ain't got anything to do with that. Well, I voted for him, and he's causing these problems. It's, it had not anything to do with that. No matter what country you live in, even if it's a dictator, it doesn't matter. Because, listen to me, when this starts taking place, God's, he, he's working everybody. Right. Don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. The Bible is pretty clear that it says that, that God puts people in authority, in a, in a power. In a, in, and we can argue about that all we want, but you can't argue with God. Okay? So... The reason that I am, I am preaching this and trying to grab your attention with this is this. Listen to me. The, the church in America has a fascination with the world. 
It is consumed by the news and people expressing their views and they want to say what they feel. And, and I know I talked about this last week. They put it on Facebook like nobody knows they're, you know, who they are. Listen to me today. There are going to be things coming on the earth and they're going to come and they're going to try to divide and they're going to even try to divide the body of Christ. And you have to be careful in your life that you understand and recognize I'm not going to be divided from the body of Christ. I am not going to let social issues or any other issue divide me from the body of Christ. Everybody's entitled to, to their view. Not, we're all different. We all were raised different, you know, and we all have different views, different perspectives of things. You, I don't necessarily feel what you feel. You don't feel what I feel. I know this, you know, I've said this before, but I was raised in Mississippi in the 50s and 60s. Not a very good place for black folk to be living. And I know that. I witnessed it. Okay. But I don't, I can't feel it. But listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Everybody has a view. They have a perspective. It doesn't matter who you voted for. It, you may have a view. You may have a perspective. But I want you to hear something today. Now listen to me. Any view that would affect your relationship with a brother in Christ should be kept to itself. Now, I'm not talking about rising up if there's an injustice and seeing that justice is done. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your opinions. What you think. Because what you have to have, first of all, is a perspective of who you are. And first and foremost, you are a member of the body of Christ. You are an individual, but you are not your own. And we've got to be responsible to one another. Because I'm just telling you right now, the, 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 the enemy is trying its best to separate and divide the body of Christ. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. You've got to be careful. You can't do that. Well, I think my opinion is as good as anybody else's. Yeah, and they're, both of them are not good for nothing except being your opinion. You say, well, you're meddling. Yes, I am. Listen, I'm your pastor. I've got to tell you the truth. You're sitting here together as brothers and sisters in Christ, and that's who we really are. And we've got to live that way. We've got to talk that way. We've got to walk that way. Amen. All right, I'm, I'm, if I keep on that, I, I'm going to make somebody mad. I know, so I'm going to hush. But here's the, here's the thing that you've got to do. Listen to me. You have to make up your mind that your worldview is God's worldview. Okay? You're not getting it from CNN or Fox or ABC, NBC, CBS or any of the others. You're getting it from God. When you see a calamity, when you see a circumstance, the first thing you ought to do is go to the Word and say, what does God say I should do? How does God say I should react? That's how we have to live our lives. Otherwise, when you get over into really calamitous times, your heart will fail you because you're hooked up with the wrong source. Do you know, listen, every news organization you know would go under if they told you good news. They thrive on bad news. And if they, if they can't find something, they make something up. <laughs> it's the truth. So the point I'm making is this. You've got to know who you're hooked up with, and you've got to have some anchors. Okay? Hebrews 6, 19. Listen to this. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. 
both sure and steadfast. Now, that's talking about one particular thing. I'm not going to talk about that today. I've already done that. But my point is, there are anchors for your soul that can keep you sure and steadfast in any storm of life. And you better get those anchors out before the storm starts. You better be solid before the storm starts, before there's adversity, before there are things in your life that you can't handle. You've got to be anchored because your soul is what drives you. Ah, I walk in the Spirit. Yeah, you walk in the Spirit, but you think in the soul. Amen. You are a spirit being if you're born of God. You are alive unto God. But your soul is what determines how much of that you will go with God. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you can be alive unto God and live a hell life. How do you know? Because I see it happen. I see people born of God. The next thing you know, they're out in the nightclubs. Why? Because their soul has not been renewed. They don't have anchors in their soul. They're not allowing their soul to move over with God. It's your mind, your will, your emotions. That's who makes you, you. That's why you're you. It's because of your soul. If, if, that was, if the soul wasn't that important, why is it that the only thing that dies is your body? When you go to heaven, your soul and your spirit go to heaven. Why? Because that's you. When my spirit goes to heaven, my soul says, come on, we're going. We want to be a part of this. It's my mind, my will, and my emotions, my determinations in life. And you've got to have those anchored in the things of God. Because if you don't, then in times of stress in your life, you're going to do like the old Spanish say it, El Foldo. <laughs> Forgive me to my Spanish friends. I, I'm just wondering, we, we translate, you know, for our... For our Spanish speaking, I wonder how they translated that right there. <laughs> I don't think there's a translation. Where's Sandra? Is she over there? How do you translate El Foldo? <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right, let me go on. Come on. Listen, your soul is the pivot point of your life, okay? If it's not anchored, then you're going to get in trouble. Mark 8, 36 says, if what, what, what profit is it in a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You know what that tells me? That tells me that your soul can drive you in a direction that's contrary to salvation. You can't live that way. Your soul has to be anchored. And if it's not anchored properly, you will be the subject to all the winds of the world and all the circumstances of life. Just going to go where the, where the wind blows, and it's not the Holy Spirit we're talking about. Okay, let me show you another scripture Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. Jeremiah, I, I, I'll tell you, I'm glad God didn't call me to be a Jeremiah. I, I'm, I'm honest about it. That's probably why He didn't call me to be one. But, but Jeremiah was always speaking to Israel in rebellion and telling them how God, what God was going to do to them. That was his job. And you know what? He didn't have any friends. And every time you turn around, he's in prison. He's been beat up because he's just telling them what God's saying. So finally, Jeremiah says, God, you've got to do something about this. They're not even listening anymore. It's bad, Lord. Didn't you notice? It's bad. Now, I know I'm paraphrasing, but you're going to get it. It's bad. And you know what the Lord told him? If you run with the footman and been wearied, in other words, you think this is bad, and you're getting tired now, listen to the rest of it. Put it back up there. How will you do 
in the floodplain of Jordan. What, how are you going to do when it floods? If you've run with the footmen, they've weird you. How are you going to contend with the horses? If the land, if you're in the land of peace in which you trusted they weird you, how shall you do in the floods? You can't even run with the footmen, and you're gonna have to. I got you, I got you set up to run with horses. If you can't run with them, how are you gonna do this? If you can't live your life now, how are you gonna live it later? Listen to what Paul, listen to what Jeremiah said here. Listen to this. He said this, if in the land of peace in which you trusted, you were wearied, how are you going to do this in the floods? Yeah. Notice what he said. He said, if you trusted in the land of peace and you're tired, how in the world are you going to ever make it when it floods? Now, here's the deal. Listen to this. Here's, here it is. He was trusting in the land and in the peace that was in the land. And the Lord said to him, it's going to get worse. And if you're running trusting in the land, what are you going to do when the floods come? If, you, if your peace is dependent upon how things are going in the land, and that's what you're trusting in, what are you going to do when it floods? If you're getting tired now just because you got a bill you can't pay or, you know, I'm fighting something in my body and, or this is having somebody spoke bad about me, how in the world are you going to deal with it when all hell breaks loose on earth? Don't forgive my bluntness, but that's what he's saying. And here's the thing that Jeremiah was trusting in. He was trusting in the peace that was in the land. You cannot trust in the peace that's in the land. See, listen, America, the only war we've ever fought on our soil, we fought each other. It's just like the devil, isn't it? Now, I know we had a few little skirmishes. I'm talking about a war. What if war came to America and all your peace was upside down? We, we saw that on 9-11, didn't we? Now, I'm not prophesying that. Don't misunderstand me. But my point is, if you're, not, if you're not anchored in some kind of peace that's beyond what you're trusting in this world, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because our peace is greater than anything that this world can provide. In fact, well, let me just get into it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There is a peace that belongs to you. That's way beyond anything this world could ever understand. The word peace that's used in the New Testament primarily means, listen to me, soul harmony. Soul harmony. That's not Sam and Dave. Okay. How many of you got that? Raise your hands. You just, I just want to see who, who knows Sam and Dave. just want to make sure. It tells you how old you are for one thing. But listen to me. It's talking about your soul being in harmony. Your mind, your will, and your emotions flowing in the same direction. That's, that's, what, that's what peace is. When your mind, your will, your emotions, you're going in the same direction. It really, the literal Greek says, you are set at one. Set at one. Peace can only come one way. And that peace can only come by being one with God, by being in agreement with Him. What does that mean? You're thinking His thoughts. You're doing His will. You have His goals in your life, in mind. Instead of your own. Once you put yourself in that place, that position, all of a sudden you're in agreement with God. 
I, I have found out that peace is real simple. What do you want, Lord? Okay. I'll go that. I'll do that. I'm going to keep my mind on that. Okay. All of a sudden, peace. I have peace. Why? Because that's, that's, that's the peace that you have. It belongs to you. The minute you get off on your own doing what you want to do and doing it your way, all of a sudden there's no peace. Listen to what Jesus said in John 14, verse 27. Listen to this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Jesus said, now listen to me, my peace I give to you. Now, I don't know about you, that's pretty good peace. Number one, I think about this. Jesus was in a boat, sitting on a, sleeping on a cushion in the back of the boat, and the boat was sinking. And it didn't even bother him. Sound asleep. His disciples woke him up. Oh, don't you care? Don't you care? Jesus got up. You know what he did? He transferred his peace to the storm. He said, peace, be still. That's the kind of peace he gave to you. In fact, it's even stronger than that in the Greek text. It actually means I will this to you. Like when you die, you know, you leave somebody something. I will this to you. Jesus said, I will this to you. I bequeath this to you. It belongs to you. Peace belongs to you. Not as the world gives, not the world's peace, but the peace that I have. I give to you. See, the world has a funny thing about peace. They think peace is, you know, kind of everything's, oh, everything's good right now. But even when you say that, you think, well, it's going to get worse, or it could do this, or it could do that. Because that's not where peace lives. Before I got saved, I looked for peace. I looked for it in alcohol, and I found peace after about three drinks. Sometimes four. But the problem was I had to wake up the next morning. Where was that peace I had last night? Take drugs. Had peace for a little while. Next morning you wake up, where's that peace I had? Not as the world gives. Not as the world gives. The world's peace doesn't last. It can give you a moment. It can give you a little bit of happiness. It can give you a, a time. But, but God's peace abides. It's where we are. But now here's the thing you've got to listen to. Okay, this is what you've got to hear about this, and it's very, very important that you listen to this because you cannot have somebody pray for peace for you. Oh, just pray for peace for me. Oh, pray that I have peace. Can't do it. He gave it to you, not me. He didn't give it to me to give to you. you he gave it to you. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you do is the, is the negative part. Listen to this out of the Amplified Bible. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. Amplified. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. Do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. Whose job is that? It's yours. It's not my job. It, listen, I, I, I do, you know, I, I don't do as much now as I used to, but I counsel with people. First thing you can tell, oh, they don't have any peace. And to be honest with you, it's hard to work with people who don't have peace. Because they're, contro they're controlled by everything else. Well, are they Christians? Yeah, they're Christians. They just don't have any peace. They let everything in the world intimidate them, agitate them, disturb them, to be fearful. Coward, unsettled. Well, you would too if you knew all my problems. Well, just rem let me remind you, that's just walking. What happens when you have to run with the horses? You better deal with it now. That's why people jump off of buildings in crisis and commit suicide because their soul 
can't handle it. No person in the spirit ever committed suicide. It's always right here. Good people have committed suicide. Well, they probably went to hell because they, no, they didn't. I don't, I don't know whoever, I have no idea. I guess because Judas committed suicide. Everybody thinks everybody commits suicide. They're going to hell. You know what? That's just not true. That's not, that's not true at all. All right, I'm not going to get into that. I'll, I'll take all my time. Listen to this. Jesus was very, very plain spoken about this. The world's peace and God's peace are totally different. One translation said this, not fragile like the peace that the world gives. Another one, well, I'll stick with it. Not fragile like the world gives. I remember before I got saved, times of peace in my life, but it didn't last. It didn't last. Just till the next crisis, the next problem, or till I needed the next drink or next joint or whatever. By the way, kids, that was 40 years ago, <laughs> over 40 years ago, yeah. just so you'll know, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't recent. <laughs> don't, don't anybody get a wrong impression here. But listen, now listen to me. If you don't challenge yourself to walk in His peace now, what are you going to do when it really gets worse you trust in the peace that's in the land what if it gets worse listen i'll take you some places i've been uh that uh, uh you'll find out whether you're walking in god's peace or not because there's no peace in the land go to the congo with me yeah go to syria or lebanon or jordan you'll find there's no peace in the land if you don't have it on the inside of you, you ain't got it. But it's yours. It's been willed to you. It's been bequeathed to you. It belongs to you. Now let me show you something here. In, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, listen to what it says. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. All right, the opposite of peace is confusion. If I can't get you in peace, you're going to be confused. You're, you're not going to be able to figure anything out. You're not going to, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I don't, you, you know, you, you, you're everywhere. Why? Because you don't have soul harmony. You're not in peace. The word there, confusion, means instability, disorder, commotion, disturbance, and tumult. I heard somebody, they're just talking about my house. <laughs> you know what? Peace can be, I mean, that can be in your house, but you can be in peace. The root word there is the word inconsistent. Isn't that amazing? The word for confusion, the root word's inconsistent. Here's the scary part, James 3.16. Where there is confusion, there is every evil work but i'm a christian where there is confusion there is every evil work the devil cannot fight your peace he can't fight it it's it just he, he he bumps up when he bumps up against your peace and you're confident in god and i'm going to show you in a minute how to do that but you're confident in god and you're walking with god and you've got peace in your life the devil just says all right, I got to find another way at this boy. I can't, got, what am I going to do? And then you just smile and walk in peace. But if he can get you in, 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 out of peace, he's got you in stabi instability, confusion, guess what happened? Every evil work. So maybe I've got your attention. You do know you need to walk in peace. All right, so, well, Pastor, how do I do it? Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Listen to what it says. 
you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. How, what's that word? Stayed. When you, say, when you tell a dog, stay, that means you want him to stay put. Stayed on him because he trusts in you. You want to know about trust? Get Wednesday night sermon. Listen to me. If your mind is steadfast, then your will and your emotions will come into harmony with your mind, which means your soul is in harmony, which means you have peace. If you will commit yourself to God in all your ways, God said he would keep you in perfect peace. It's interesting here because that word there is not really perfect peace. In the Hebrew, it's peace, peace. Peace, peace. He will keep you in peace, peace. More peace than you can ever imagine. He'll keep you in perfect peace. One translation says, Thou dost keep in peace men of constant mind. In peace because they trust in thee. Another one says, The steadfast mind thou will keep in perfect peace. So what does that mean? It means you have to put your mind in the right place. You have to put it in harmony with God, with God's will, with what God's doing. And you're thinking God's thoughts. Let me show you how important it was to God for you to have peace in your life on this earth. Listen to Isaiah 53, verse 5. You may not have ever seen this or noticed this before, but look at this. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him, and by his stripes you're healed. Do you know that for some reason, and I don't know that reason yet, that God, Jesus had to be chastised so you could have peace? He paid a price for your peace. The same price he paid for your, paid for your sins, for your healing. He paid that same price so you could have peace in your life. And you want to go around and act like you don't have peace and you're totally discombobulated and don't know which way to go and what to do. And the whole time the Lord said, peace, 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 peace be unto you. Now I'm going to deal with this more in detail Wednesday night. So you want to come Wednesday, I'm going to show you how to really how to live in this, but, but I, I'm trying to get you to see and understand that if you'll walk in this peace, if you'll grab hold of what God's saying here and walk in this, everything around you can be topsy-turvy. Even in your own life, it may be up and down, but on the inside, there's perfect peace. I've, I've experienced this in so many different ways. And y'all know, I mean, we, we, we live our lives open before you. And you know, when Becky and the girls had that wreck, it was the most tragic thing that had ever happened in our lives. At one time, my whole family was in the hospital. But I want to tell you, now, and you can ask Becky, you can ask my kids, I had perfect peace. Now, some people would look at you and say, you ought to be bawling and squalling and banging the walls and saying, why me, God? But I didn't. And it wasn't because I'm some super duper person. It's because I practiced peace enough that it just came on me. It just came on me. You can believe God a lot better when you're in peace than you are when you're trying to fight elements and fight circumstances. It's amazing how it works. Now listen. Isaiah 57 verse 20 says this. Don't be part of what I'm about to read to you. Isaiah 57, verse 20, listen to what it says. The wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. There is no peace for anybody who's not in, in Christ. Say, so, well, they're not wicked. They're good people. They don't have peace. Listen, there was a hole in my, 
in my, in my soul that only the peace of God could fill. I try, if you'd have looked at me on the outside, man, I was driving a new car, living in a nice house, a lot of money, but there was no peace. No peace till I made Jesus the Lord of my life. Listen to what it says here. It's really interesting. It says that the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Always something new. Always garbage. Always something coming up. Garbage, garbage, garbage. That's the way the wicked lives their life. Why? Because there's no peace. Now here's the sad part about that. Listen, the sad part about that is that a lot of Christians live that way with no peace. I think the most miserable person to me, the most miserable person on the earth is a backslidden Christian because they know what peace is and they're not walking in it. It's, at the, it's, it's right there and they're not walking in it. Here's a scripture that I live by. It's found in Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And I'm going to read the Amplified Version so you can get the full effect of it. Okay? Listen to what it says. Let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule. Act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind that in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ, one body you are also called to live. Be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. I learned, and I, I wish I could remember exactly when I learned this, but I learned that peace will direct your life. It will rule your life if you'll let it. And if you live in peace, you're going to avoid a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties in your life. You have to have peace in your life in order to hear from God, to get direction from God. And I made up my mind, if I don't have peace about something, you say, well, what does that feel like? Well, you'll know when it comes. If, if I don't have peace about something, if I feel agitated or don't feel comfortable, I back up. I mean, it guides me. It guides me in the, in the church and in the ministry. I was supposed to go in February to the Ukraine. Who goes to the Fe- Ukraine in February? I mean, it's 20 below, you know. But I was go- I, there was a minister's meeting. They asked me to come. I was going to be speaking to four to 500 ministers, which that's, that's just right down the middle for me. And I got excited about it. I committed to it. But the closer it got, I just didn't have any peace. I didn't have any peace about it. I said, I, mm, I don't have peace about this. And so I said, I'm not going. And I'd already got, I already bought the ticket. They'd already arranged the meeting. Now I wasn't going to be the only speaker, but, but it was going to put a bind on them. But I just called my pastor friend. I said, listen, I just don't have peace. Thank God he's a man of God. And he said, I understand. He said, I wish you'd go. I know it would be great. But if you don't have peace, don't go. Don't go. I can't tell you how many people I know over the years, it, it, it just in one realm, just in the job realm, where they're at peace, they're happy, they got a great job, somebody offers them more money, and they leave. Well, I didn't feel good about it, but look at all the money money I'm making. And then all of a sudden they're struggling because they don't have peace. Now, here's the thing you're not going to like, okay? That's why I had music behind me, make it feel better. (laughs) Here's, listen to me, here's what you're not going to like because you're going to say, well, how do I get peace? If I've lost my peace, how do I get it? All right, you ready? You back up to where you had peace. No, I, 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 don't, I lost my peace, 
but I want it back right here. No, it doesn't work that way. you got to back up. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go in reverse to get my peace back. I'm out there, I want to do this, or I'm going to go here, or I'm going to do this, and I tell you, I lose my peace, and I say, I don't even say it anymore because I know better. God, give me peace. And the Lord said, yeah, I will. Moonwalk for me. Back up. Backstroke. And I have to back up to where that peace is. Once I get back where peace is, I say, oh, this is what I want. This is it. Now, I know some of you are thinking, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm going to back up before I got married. I, I, I had peace in my house before I got married. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I know you. I know you. You can let it act as an umpire in your life. Listen, it might be as simple as this. I don't have peace about going to the grocery store. Now, that's not going to be something that happens often, but every once in a while, you might be going to go do something, go to the grocery store, go, go do something. All of a sudden, you don't, you, you don't have peace. Stop. Stop. Don't do it. Many years ago, I was in the Philippines, and I was on my way home. I was at the airport. I was on my way home, and, and um, I'm sitting there in the airport lounge, you know, with everybody else, and, and I looked over, and about from here to the wall over there, there were these two guys just beating the crud out of this guy. I mean, just had him on the ground, just pounding him and pounding him, and I, I felt compassion toward him, and I took a step like this to go intervene. Woo, my peace left. I mean, whoosh, it was gone. I stepped back. Peace came back. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, don't go over there. Come to find out, the police came not too far, long after that. Come to find out, these were two Libyans who were beating up a taxi driver because the taxi driver cheated them. And they were on their way back to Libya to fight the great Satan America for bombing them. You never know. Thank God that I listen to peace. Thank the Lord I listen to peace. It can guide your life. It can rule for you. It's such a simple process. If you just learn, you got it. And stay in it. It's amazing what can happen. If you just walk in that and live in that. But listen to me today. You can lose your peace. You can lose it because you don't obey God. You don't stay in the will of God. Sometimes you lose your peace just because you want to be selfish. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. You just got out of peace. That's not what your mind's for. I see people, I see people today get in strife over just a, just nothing. Nothing. They just get in strife. Don't do that. The saddest thing, and I, I mention this, but is if you're if you're a Christian and you've gotten out of peace because you, you're not serving God. There's only one way to get that back in your life, and that's to make a commitment to get out of sin get right with God if you're not saved you have no chance of peace without Jesus he's the prince of peace 